Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. In this episode, we'll be talking about an add-on to the Pokemon series called the Pokemon Mini. Not to be confused with the Pocket Pikachu, you may be wondering just what this thing is, and we wouldn't blame you for that. So, allow us to give you a little rundown. Before we get into the trivia, however, we'd like to talk about today's sponsor. Using the internet without an encrypted connection lets the world see everything you do, including hackers and companies wanting to sell your information. With ExpressVPN, you can browse the net safely with an encrypted connection that keeps your data secure. ExpressVPN also masks your IP address, granting access to geo-restricted content. Services like Netflix have different shows for every country, so changing your region with a VPN unlocks more shows than what you're paying for. We've used this feature while making our region-locked videos to watch geo-restricted YouTube videos, and it works a treat. This also works for geo-restricted servers, so you can download games restricted in your region. ExpressVPN connects with one click, never logging your activity. It's the fastest VPN we've tried and was rated the best VPN by TechRadar and CNET. There's an app for all your devices, even your router, which protects every device on your network. ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month and has a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and see how to get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description or going to expressvpn.com slash dykg for three months free with a one-year package. Package. Visit the link in the description to learn more. And now, back to the Mini. The Pokemon Mini was a console designed and manufactured by Nintendo, specifically made for Pokemon-centric minigames. The system was unveiled in September 2001 at a Nintendo event called the Nintendo Show. Held at Westminster Hall in merry old London, England, it was advertised as a major Pokemon announcement. The Mini was released in North America in November of 2001, with a Japanese launch nearly a month later, and later still in Europe, being released in March of the following year. It's possible that Australia may have been the first market the Mini was available in, with classification for the system's launch title cited as October 3rd, 2001, though the release in the region isn't well documented. The Pokemon Mini aptly holds the title for the smallest cartridge-based Nintendo system ever made, with it weighing in at a grand total of 70 grams, battery and game cartridge included. The cartridges themselves are roughly the size of a postage stamp. Even with its small stature, the console boasted some impressive features, especially for the time. It included an internal real-time clock and timer, being able to keep track of time even when the system was off. It also had an infrared sensor for multiplayer games, with one game in particular able to support up to 10 players at a time. It also came with a built-in rumble feature, as well as a shock detector, which let you control Pokémon on screen by rattling your hand like a, quote, poker fan possessed. The console's battery life also clocked in at a whopping 60-hour lifespan, with the use of a single AAA battery. The Mini came with one game, and was available in three different colors, Wooper Blue, Chikorita Green, and Smoochum Purple, a few of the most popular Pokémon, according to Nintendo UK. The console wasn't as big a success considering it carried the Pokémon name. Marketing was practically non-existent for the system, and it came out the same year as the Game Boy Advance. Despite some of its technical prowess, it couldn't compete with the GBA's capabilities and was seen as more of a toy than a gaming system. The Pokémon Mini could be found stocked in stores for roughly a year factoring in all markets. Only 10 games were developed for the console, and of that total, only Japan received the entire library. Four games made their way to North America, and five were released in Europe. North America saw the likes of Pokémon Pinball Mini, a pinball-style game where Pokémon like Diglett took the place of a pinball plunger, the self-explanatory Pokémon Puzzle Collection, and Pokémon Zany Cards, a collection of card games featuring characters from the Pokémon anime. Pokémon Party Mini came bundled with the system, and served as a showcase of what the console could do, utilizing all of its features across six minigames. Games that were Japan-exclusive included a platform racer hybrid called Pokémon Race Mini, an adventure game called Togepi's Great Adventure, a sequel to Pokémon Puzzle Mini featuring 80 new puzzles, and a follow-up to Party Mini featuring the Pichu Brothers, characters that made their debut in the anime short Pikachu and Pichu, shown alongside the third Pokémon movie. The last game released for the system was Pokémon Breeder Mini in December 2002, a virtual pet-style game, similar to a Tamagotchi. The Mini was released during the second generation of the Pokémon series, with Gold and Silver having released the year before in North America. With Breeder Mini in particular, 
the system briefly overlapped into the third generation, as it features the starter Pokémon from Ruby and Sapphire, which released in Japan a month prior. There's evidence showing a couple mini-titles were considered for a wider release, but it's likely these plans were hampered due to the system's low sales. Puzzle Collection Volume 2 had been classified by the ESRB under E for Everyone, and would have gone under the similar title Pokémon Mini Puzzle Collection Volume 2, but it ultimately stayed in Japan. Similarly, Pokémon Tetris, the game which received localization outside of Japan but did not see release in the United States, also received an ESRB classification and would have been titled Pokémon Mini Shock Tetris. While every other game for the Mini was developed by Japanese studios Jupiter or Denyusha, Pokémon Tetris is the one game in the Mini's library to be developed by Nintendo themselves. As an aside, it's also the last game where Jinx is depicted with its original skin coloring. This version of Tetris is regarded as one of the best games released for the Mini, and has a high asking price on the second-hand market. The European release is especially elusive, with only a few thousand copies ever being printed. The Pokémon Mini concept would be tackled one more time the following year, showing up on the Nintendo GameCube release of the game Pokémon Channel, where it likely received the most exposure. The game has a built-in emulator for the Mini, and games are obtained through the Shop and Squirtle channel where the player can buy various items. The games available for play are altered or stripped down from their original versions. Half of the games came from Pokémon Party Mini, and it's likely the remaining three from the collection weren't ported over due to the unique nature of how they controlled and played on the original hardware. Pokémon Channel also featured an all-new game exclusive to the title called Snorlax's Lunchtime, where the player helps a Snorlax decide what's edible and what isn't. If Snorlax tries to chow down on a Pichu, the game ends. While the Mini didn't leave much of an impression, it did find another lease of life in a different realm of the gaming scene. With the advent of the console receiving an emulator on the GameCube, it allowed people to understand the hardware better, eventually leading to a homebrew scene among hackers. A group of coders under the name Team Pokemi went under the hood and developed a flashcard demo called Shizzle in 2004. This demo was first shown off at German demo scene Breakpoint in 2005, and excited the community, showcasing 3D effects and many other features previously thought impossible on the Mini. They've since made the tools available for others to create their own games, and a number of titles are available for the system, with a few more in development at the time of this video. All games are featured on Team Pokémi's website, PokémonMini.net. The community has also taken the time to preserve the original hardware with scans of some of the original game's instruction manuals, as well as enhance the console itself, with customizable colors and even a mod to introduce a built-in backlight. Over the years, the team has also taken the five Pokémon games released only in Japan and given them full English translations, with the final game being translated in May 2019. All games are available via flashcart or emulation, including the GameCube exclusive Snorlax's Lunchtime. The team also covered news of a Pokémon Mini prototype that was up for sale on eBay in 2016. The seller had said the system wasn't working anymore, and it came with a cartridge reading Sample 01011. It's not known what this cartridge might have held, be it an early prototype of a final game, an unreleased game, or possibly something else entirely, as the person who bought the system has remained anonymous ever since. And now, we're shifting away from Pokémon for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today, we'll be taking a look at Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the GameCube. Jungle Beat distances itself from the rest of the modern DK series, with Donkey Kong himself being the only recognizable character amidst a sea of new faces only ever seen in this game, and making use of the then-recently released bongos. Many initially believed this new direction for the franchise was taken because of a distaste for earlier incarnations of Donkey Kong games, specifically Donkey Kong Country. In February 2005, an article was posted on IGN through then-affiliate website Nsider. 
The article was of a translated interview conducted by Japan's Nintendo Online magazine with Jungle Beat producer Takao Shimizu and director Yoshiaki Koizumi. By Insider's account, when asked about the game's characters, Koizumi allegedly said, All the characters outside of Donkey Kong and the Banana are completely original. We don't really feel the past look of Donkey Kong was fresh enough for today. We really gave our new development team the chance to create something unique and stylish. Years later, in Super Mario Odyssey, also produced by Koizumi, multiple references to Donkey Kong's historical cast of characters appeared in the New Donk City level, including those that Koizumi allegedly showed distaste for. This caused a number of diehard DK fans to wonder if his comments from the Jungle Beat interview were 100% truthful, or if they were twisted through poor translation. The original Japanese interview was tracked down and retranslated, with Source Gaming supplying the final update. The truth behind the change-up in cast was more due to the fact Jungle Beat had elements unlike anything Donkey Kong was known for up to that point. The team felt Jungle Beat should be treated as an entirely new game, rather than a continuation of the already established franchise. With the potential for Nintendo EAD Tokyo to leave their own creative mark on the title. That's it from me today, but I hope that you enjoyed this episode and learned something new about a little mini piece of Pokemon's history. Did you get it? Jungle Beat was a good game as well, actually, now that I think about it. See you on the flippity floppity floppity.